This video is made possible by Trends. Trends is the ultimate knowledge hub from The Hustle. Trends is a networking community for entrepreneurs and budding entrepreneurs. It's a place where you can connect and even workshop with investors and founders who can share valuable insights to help get your ideas off the ground. Trends brings together expert knowledge, data science and investigative journalism to track new industries and likely trends. Remember our video about the surprising success of A2 Milk that outstrips tech companies in profits in 2019? Well, over on Trends, you can find in-depth trends analysis on the alternative milk industry Industry, as well as detailed reports on loads of niche markets that could really help you capitalize on your own ideas. Or maybe you're stuck for ideas. Dive into Trends exclusive research with intriguing topics to help inspire, like the 30 companies defining the future of media and pop culture, or data on thousands of successful Kickstarter projects. We also like the live weekly lectures from the founders who give practical tips about everything from internet security to branding to getting the most out of YouTube. Hey, you're never too old to learn something new after all. Best of all, right now you can get your first seven days for just one dollar. Go to trends.co slash VP for your one dollar seven day trial. And now let's see what Josh has for us. Twenty twenty is such a terrible year that we can already start using it as a synonym for misfortune. Ugh, I'm a little 2020. My car is falling apart. That match was a 2020. We lost the game by eight goals. However, as terrible as it has been this year, it looks like we're going to end with some very good news. There are at least two very promising vaccines already. One from Pfizer BioNTech and another from Moderna. Both are about 95% effective in early human trials. And by the time this video is uploaded, they will probably have received emergency approval in the United States. This is much more than a light at the end of the pandemic tunnel. In addition, these two vaccines use a unique technology that could revolutionize the pharmaceutical world. Both vaccines will be the first in history to use mRNA technology. Come on, we're talking about a giant leap in the history of science. In other words, humanity is in luck. And yet, not everyone believes this to be the case. Listen up. The percentage of Americans who say they would get a COVID-19 vaccine is falling, CNN poll finds. Exactly. Many people in the United States and around the world do not trust these new vaccines. But hold on just a second before you make any judgments. Many of these people are not anti-vaxxers by any means. In fact, there is a legitimate concern about the safety of these vaccines. In previous visual politic videos, we told you how most vaccines take years, even decades, to be ready for the market. And this is because of all the controls they have to go through. This means that the COVID-19 vaccine could be approved in record time. And it's understandable that many people are suspicious. Many of them are informed people. Take a look. Why emergency COVID vaccine approvals pose a dilemma for scientists. Meanwhile, anti-vaxxers are having a field day. You know, those who think that vaccines are dangerous. Many of them also think that the entire pandemic is a conspiracy. A conspiracy created by Big Pharma in order to make money selling vaccines. So the question is, is this really going to be such a huge business for the pharmaceutical companies? Do we really have to worry about vaccine safety? How is it possible that coronavirus vaccines have been released in record time? Today, we're going to look at these questions. But first, let's look at a little history. Are we going to be guinea pigs? How is it possible that the coronavirus vaccine is appearing so soon? One good answer is the public support it has received. To give you an idea, the White House has invested more than $18 billion in funding research and buying vaccines in advance. The European Union has not been far behind. Moreover, almost all pharmaceutical companies and laboratories, both public and private, have jumped on the bandwagon. To give you an idea, there are currently 198 vaccine candidates in the testing phase. We have never seen such a global effort to find a vaccine, but this is not the only reason. The creation of a vaccine has several phases. The first is laboratory studies, then come the animal tests, the so-called preclinical trials, then come the human trials, that is, the clinical trials, which in turn are divided into three phases. The first is with dozens of volunteers, the second with hundreds, and the third with thousands. Finally comes the manufacturing part, which is also very long because it is necessary to build a factory specifically for each vaccine. We explained all of this in more detail in a video that I'll link for you in the description. Well, in order to reduce the timeline, many laboratories have overlapped these phases. 
For example, in May of this year, Novavax started building a vaccine factory in the Czech Republic, very close to Prague. Its vaccine has not yet been approved by the authorities. However, they have already spent a whopping $160 million to build the factory. If the vaccine doesn't work, all of that money will be lost. However, if they are approved, they will have vaccines ready to send to hospitals the next day. Something similar is happening with clinical trials. There is no shortage of volunteers to participate. Everyone wants to do their part to end this pandemic. To give you an idea, Pfizer needs 42,000 volunteers to test its vaccine, and they have already managed to complete half of the testing. And finally, the authorities are working as fast as they can. In fact, measures like this are being considered. Pfizer applies for emergency FDA approval for COVID-19 vaccine. Moderna CEO says COVID-19 vaccine could get emergency approval in December. And you'll say, what's the story with this emergency approval? Well, it's a legal body that was created in the United States in 2009. In emergency situations, the US Food and Drug Administration, which is the authority in charge of health regulations, can allow a drug to go to market even if it has not completed all the clinical trials. For example, this is the law that allowed COVID PCR tests to be used as early as February 2020. It has also been used to test for other diseases, such as the Zika virus. In these cases, the FDA closely monitors who is taking these drugs and how. The moment the slightest problem is detected, the emergency approval can be revoked. And I know what many of you are going to say, I don't want to be anyone's guinea pig. I don't want to get the vaccine until it's passed all the checks. In this case, I can reassure you, it will be a long time before you will be able to get any vaccine against COVID-19. The first ones to get it, assuming that one of these vaccines receives this emergency approval, would be the United States healthcare providers. So unless you are a healthcare worker in the United States, you can be rest assured. Probably by the time you are eligible for the vaccine, it will have been more than tested and studied. That said, the question some may be asking is, what if this all was just a conspiracy by the pharmaceutical companies to become billionaires? After all, the whole world is waiting for the vaccine against COVID-19. Won't the first to get their vaccine out become the biggest company in the world? Well, right now, we're going to have a look at that. Pfizer's gonna make a fortune. This is a warning to all those who want to invest in the stock market without knowing much about finance. Be careful. Yes, indeed. Being the first to get an approved coronavirus vaccine is good news for any company. The question is, how good is that news? Well, Pfizer announced that it had completed phase three of the trials of its vaccine on 18th of November, 2020. The day before, their shares were at $36.04. At the time of making this video, they are at $37.24. Since the month of March, Pfizer has grown around 35% on the stock market. Of course, that is good news, but it is not the gold mine that many would have imagined. So why is that? Shouldn't their trial success line them up for company of the year? Well. Take a look at these numbers. At the moment, the United States has already bought a lot of vaccines in advance from Pfizer. In total, the White House has paid $1.95 billion to this company. It seems like a lot of money, but in reality, it's not such a huge figure if we compare it to the $16 billion that Pfizer made in profit in 2019. Think about it. Pfizer is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. They sell such successful drugs as Lipitor, Celebrex, and the hugely famous Viagra. In other words, the COVID-19 vaccine is just one more medicine on a long list. But not only that, it may surprise you, but the pharmaceutical business has more complications than it seems. Of course, everyone needs medicine, but the research alone to bring in a new medicine to the market involves millions of dollars of investment. And of all research projects, only about 15% receive approval from the authorities. In other words, most pharmaceutical research does not even reap benefits. And what about the 15% of drugs that can be marketed? Well, many of them have a shelf life of around 20 years. 20 years is the time the patent lasts before it expires. And after that time, patents are released and generic drugs can be manufactured. For example, Viagra is one of Pfizer's biggest bestsellers. However, after a lot of legal battles this year, the patent has expired in the United States. All this means that, as of April this year, Pfizer will have to face the tough competition of the generic Viagra from other companies. For that reason, Pfizer needs to be constantly taking out new patents. In fact, the rise in Pfizer's stock market price is not only explained by the COVID-19 vaccine. This company is working to get other drugs approved as well, such as a cure for breast cancer, which could be approved soon. And you're probably thinking, okay, okay, Perhaps Pfizer is not part of this conspiracy, but what can you tell me about Moderna, huh? Why has Moderna's share price gone through the roof? Perhaps its vaccine is better than Pfizer's. Let's take a look right now. 
a star is born. If there's one lesson we can learn from this story, it's that even the smallest companies can take on giants like Pfizer. This is the story of Moderna. Once upon a time, in 2010, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, a small biotechnology startup was born. This company specialized in a technology almost unknown at the time, RNA. This technology would make it possible to create synthetic cells with which to cure diseases. And since this company was going to focus solely on researching mRNA, they decided to call their company Moderna Mode RNA. As a comparison, Pfizer is a huge company with dozens of patents to its credit. They researched a lot of technology and have 88,300 employees. Moderna, however, specializes in a single technology and they only have 840 employees. The story of this company could be a story of failure. Until this year, they hadn't released a single drug to the market. That means that last year, they made losses of more than $500 million. Yet, their shareholders still trusted these guys. And that trust began to pay off in April 2020. Moderna submits application to advanced coronavirus vaccine testing. And you will say, okay, but how can such a small company compete with such a giant like Pfizer? It stands to reason with so many losses, how can they possibly build a vaccine factory given how expensive such factories are? Moderna and Lonza announced worldwide strategic collaboration to manufacture Moderna's vaccine, mRNA-1273, against novel coronavirus. Lonza is a Swiss company that manufactures medicines. Thanks to this agreement, Moderna provides its technology and Lonza the factories. And this is how such a small company can bring out a product to take on the giants like Pfizer. And you'll probably say, yes, but how is it possible that they have grown so much in the stock market? Well, that's very simple. Moderna has gone from having losses in the millions to having a product to sell, and not just any product. In this case, the United States has already bought $1.5 billion worth of doses. For a company with a staff of 840 workers, this is a huge difference, and this could explain why they have grown so much on the stock market. But let's do a little recap. At best, Pfizer has said it can manufacture 1.5 billion doses of its vaccine by 2021. Moderna has said it will be able to make about 750 million. In other words, we're talking about 2.2 billion doses of vaccine. If we take into account that both the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines require two doses, we are talking about 1.1 billion people who will be able to be vaccinated in 2021. However, the world kind of has 7.8 billion inhabitants. How are we going to be able to vaccinate all of them? Let's see. A global challenge. Both the United States and the European Union have already made massive purchases of vaccines. Some, like Moderna and Pfizer, seem to be on the verge of being approved. Others, such as AstraZeneca, are less effective and may take longer. In the coming months, new vaccines are likely to come onto the market. Some may be better for certain population groups, such as the elderly or asthmatics, for example. But the truth is that each country is starting to come up with its own vaccination plans. More or less, almost all agree on the essentials. Health workers will be vaccinated first, then the elderly, who are at the greatest risk, will be vaccinated. Then other groups at risk, such as asthmatics, will be treated. Finally, the rest of the world. In other words, we will have to wait months, even years, until we all have the COVID-19 vaccine. But the question, the real question is, what about developing countries? Of course, both the United States and Europe can afford the vaccines. For example, Europe is buying Moderna vaccines at $25 per unit, and the United States has negotiated a little better and is buying at $15 per unit. But what happens in countries that cannot afford such an outlay? Remember that we are not only talking about solidarity, we are also talking about self-interest. To be able to say that we have ended this pandemic, that we can go back to traveling as before, to doing business as before, we need to all be immunized. And that's where initiatives like this Come in. X Pillar aims to ensure that every country gets fair and equitable access to eventual COVID-19 vaccines. Basically, the idea is for both private foundations and rich countries to put money into creating a global vaccine fund. These vaccines would then be distributed to all the countries of the world. The goal is to have at least 2 billion people vaccinated by the end of 2021. In principle, this would be enough to end the acute phase of the pandemic. If we take into account this mass vaccination campaign and the improved treatments that will emerge in the coming months, we will soon be able to return to our normal lives. The 
the question is, do you think this massive vaccination campaign will be a reality by the end of 2021? Do you think that all of these efforts will be enough? Leave your answer in the comments. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media Podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not mine. Also, this channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.